hi today we are going to discuss about the lambda element capacitors okay so in this section uh, we are uh, going to detail discussion about lambda section element capacitor lambda elements uh, capacitors so here this lambda element capacitor have the two parallel plates okay who's having the area a and uh, uh, in between these two parallel plate there will be separation between dielectric materials so whose dielectric material having the permittivity perm it will be epsilon r and it will be having the length l and it will be having the th uh, separation the distance between the two parallel plate is d and W is the width of the of a capacitor. So the capacitance of this capa parallel plate capacitor will become uh, C is equal to epsilon 0 uh, epsilon r into A divided by D. Here A is the area and D is the distance between the two parallel plate capacitors. So the D, A is the area. So the A is the area will be length into breadth. Okay, length into width. Here this A will become W into L okay so w is the width and l is the length of our capacitor so our capacitance equation will become epsilon 0 into epsilon r w l divided by d okay so this is the figure for the basic parallel plate capacitor configuration okay so next uh, there are whenever we are going to select a capacitor so some more several parameter we want to consider so such parameters are capacitance value tolerance uh, thermal conductivity or temperature coefficient quality factor equivalent series resistance and uh, series uh, thermal uh, series uh, reson resonance frequency parallel resonance frequency dissipation factor and the voltage rating current rating insulation resistance and time constant and its cost so these are the all parameter we want to uh, we want to consider when we are going to select a capacitor so listen uh, uh, next we are going to discuss about some of, uh, some parameter regarding with our capacitors so the first one is our uh, capa effective capacitance for in the case of effective capacitor here this is the uh, a, a capacitor having the associated with the series inductance shown in here uh, so uh, the equivalent capacitance here this equivalent capacitors of this capacitor will be c so this equivalent capacitance of this capacitor will be called it as effective capacitance so the uh, whenever this capacitor that will be uh, at, the, at, at its resonance frequency so uh, the uh, normal specified value of uh, its no uh, it, uh, it, uh, the normal specified value will be uh, zc is equal to j into omega ls minus 1 divided by omega c so listen so uh, the equivalent capacitance here this is the capacitor this with the capacitor is associated with the inductor so the equivalent capacitor ce this will be known as the effective capacitance and the, the uh, resonance frequency okay so uh, the resonance frequency uh, its value will be generally greater than our normally specified value of our capacitance so it will become z is equal to j omega ls minus 1 divided by omega c so we can get the expression as minus j divided by omega c into 1 minus omega square ls into c so here we we can convert this expression as in this that is minus j omega divided by omega minus j divided by omega c here the c value will be equal to c is equal to c into 1 minus omega square into ls into c all raised to minus 1 okay from this can from here we can uh, uh, resolve that expression in here uh, like this c into 1 minus omega divided by omega s the whole square raised to minus 1 here this uh, uh, here this will be represent the series uh, here we are going to neglect the series resistance uh, because it will be its value is much less uh, lesser than 1 okay so here we are in this expression we are going to ne we, we will mm, neglect the uh, series resistance okay so this is the effective resistance for in the case of a capacitor so next uh, here uh, quality part, factor the next point about our next uh, uh, point is quality factor so for in the case of capacitor okay so the quality factor is the uh, it is measured the capacitor's capability to store the energy 
okay so uh, listen uh, whenever we are going to discuss a quality factor of a, a capacitor it will be always depend upon the capacity okay the capacity or capability to store the energy within the uh, capacitor so when the capacitor is represented in a series combination of capacitance c and its resistance rs the quality factor will become 1 divided by omega c into rs so from here the, we know the expression of omega that should be 2 pi f so we get the quality factor equation as 1 divided by 2 pi f c into rs for in the case here from from this expression whenever the value of c is less the what happen the quality factor will become high Okay. Whenever you are, uh, whenever you are going to design a capacitor, so, so uh, you want to become a capacitor that should be having the high quality. That means it want to uh, store uh, the high energy. Uh, hence, you want to design a capacitor which will be whose capacitance value should be less. Okay. The next point about a capacitor is dissipation factor. This dissipation factor is also called a low standard. Okay, so this is the uh, dissipation factor of a capacitor is defined as the ratio of capacitor series resistance to the capacitor's reactance because it will be the ratio ratio of its capacitor's series resistance, its series resistance to its capacitive reactance. Okay, so our uh, the equation expression uh, of our dissipation factor dF is equal to omega C uh, R S okay so rs is the resistance at the resonance and it will be equal to sorry uh, resistance uh, at the series okay uh, it will be equal to 1 divided by q okay it will be always reciprocal to our quality factor and it will be get it as tan of delta okay tan of delta okay so uh, this is the expression of our uh, of our dissipation factor this dissipation factor is always tell us the approximate percentage of power loss in the capacitor so uh, uh, whenever we are we are going to work the capacitor whenever uh, when we going to work in these capacitors will be there will be a loss of uh, there will be formation of heat okay this heat is formed because of this um, power loss okay so uh, this dissipation factor is always gives uh, the approximate percentage of a uh, uh, percentage of our power loss within our capacitor so next point is uh, chip capacitor so next we are going to discuss about the different type of capacitors so here I, we are going to discuss about only two type capacitors the first one is our chip capacitor so this chip, chip capacitors are of parallel plate capacitor and are integral part uh, of in uh, uh, radio frequency and uh, microwave integrators microwave circuits uh, microwave ICs okay listen we are always using in the case of high frequency uh, analysis or high frequency circuits we are using the cheap capacitors okay uh, these made uh, by uh, uh, sandwiching Okay, high dielectric constant material between the parallel peak conductor. So uh, we are always going to make uh, this chip capacitor. This chip capacitor is made up by using the two um, parallel plate capacitor, two parallel plate. In between the parallel plate, we are using a dielectric material. This dielectric material should have the high dielectric constant. Okay, so next point is dielectric material. Uh, are you uh, dielectric material used are the ceramic or prolactic or similar type material? So we are commonly we are using these such high uh, dielectric constant materials are uh, such ceramic or prolactin type material. Okay, so next point is the high capacitors can be converted uh, using the surface mount in the technique or the so uh, soldered or they are uh, epoxy and the connector in the gold wires or in the ribbons so always we are using this capacitor uh, by connecting the surfaces mounting techniques okay these are uh, these are using okay these surfaces uh, this capacitor can be connected using the surface mounting technique okay we are commonly using such te technique for molding the um, mounting the surfaces mounting techniques okay so listen 
the next point about our C chip uh, resistor chip capacitor is it's a dielectric capacitor I always said to you uh, I already said to you uh, because when in the case of chip capacitor there will be a peculiarity there will be a specification is only in the case of the dielectric material that's we used okay so such dielectric material should have that high dielectric constant okay so listen this dielectric uh, the these cheap resistors the dielectric capacitance have the single layer type of the multi or or of the multi-layer dielectric type we can choose which type of capacitor we want to okay so listen uh, if case we want to design the capacitor we want to use this uh, chip capacitor as a single layer uh, we can uh, otherwise we can use the multi-layer dielectric type okay so uh, nam 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 okay based on our application we can use this chip capacitor as in the uh, as in the form of single layer type and or uh, and or uh, multi layer dielectric type okay for in the case of multi layer designing okay for the case of single layer designing so we always uh, get the single value of capacitance okay and in the case of the uh, in the case of the dielectric uh, constant so we have in the single value but in the case of a multi-layer designs will be having the multiple values are there for in the case we are calculating the equal dielectric constant as in the case of equivalent okay so the equivalent dialectic constant will become epsilon eq is equal to sum of m is equal to 1 to n dm divided by d tau into epsilon rm so here d tau is the total thickness so the total thickness is the uh, sum of individual thickness or sum of the individual dielectric layer that's we that's we used within our multi-layer design okay so we get the expression as in the as in terms of c is equal to 8.854 into 10 raised to 66 sorry as c is equal to 8.854 into 10 raised to 6 epsilon r equivalent into a divided by d here a and d are the square micron and the micron respectively okay so these chip capacitors in a rf and microwave circuits are connected in various configuration and uh, because this me mechanical orientation influences the parasitic parameter okay i already said to you uh, these uh, chip resistors are mainly used in the case of high frequency applications okay so uh, whenever we are using these high frequency uh, applications uh, they either will be having some mechanical rotation orientation so this mechanical orientation of our chip resistance chip capacitors it will be influences the parasitic parameter okay so next this is the uh, figure for a vertical capacitor plate okay vertical uh, vertical capacitor plate uh, chip capacitor microstrip mounting technique that will be used here okay so this is the uh, uh, exact uh, picture of uh, a chip capacitor uh, using micro strip mounting technique okay then next uh, next we are discussed uh, another type of uh, capacitor that is second type is flat mountain shunt capacitor so this flat mountain shunt capacitor will be having the connected a bypass capacitor at the end of microstrip line this type of capacitor is mainly used to bypass the capacitor to bypass at the end of microstrip line okay the top plate is wide the top plate of our uh, uh, flat mounted cushion capacitor will be connected okay the top plate wire wire bounded to a uh, microstrip and the uh, bottom plate is consoled or silver epoxy in the uh, on the ground plate okay so he listen here here we are a silvery deposition is here and these two uh, the top of the two uh, uh, capacitor that will be connected by a bound, uh, bound wire okay so such capacitors we are always used to connect the bypass connect as a bypass capacitor at the end of our microstrip line in 
our high frequency application okay so next we are going to discuss the uh, some uh, monolithic configuration of capacitors so whenever we are going to discuss in this lambda parameter uh, lambda uh, parameter ca capacitor or lambda uh, element capacitor uh, so here we want to discuss about its monolithic configuration okay so uh, this monolithic configuration of this capacitor will be having the mainly three type the first one is microstrip and the second one is interdigital structure and the third one is metal insulator metal this will be simply called it as mim listen the monolithic configuration of a capacitor is mainly having the three type the first one is micro strip and the second one is interdigital structure and the third one is metal insulator metal that means mim configuration okay so next uh, listen these are the uh, figure for uh, the three configuration this is the the, the first figure which will be represent the micro strip okay the micro strip configuration and the second figure will be represent the inter digital structure okay and the third one is mim that is metal insulator metal configuration so listen uh, here within this uh, three structure this method inter digital uh, geometry that has been used to, uh, for moderate the capacitance value okay for, for if you want to uh, if you want to uh, get a capacitor whose ha having the value will be moderate uh, we have we want to use this configuration okay namukku ivu endathoru moderate value ulla moderate capacitance value ulla or capacitor anengil so we are using this configuration inter digital configuration okay or inter digital structure so this both inter micro strip and inter digital structure uh, configurations are fabricated using conventional mic techniques we will be using the conventional any type uh, conventional type of mic techniques and in the case of mim okay in the case of metal insulator metal capacitor it will be fabricated using the multi level process okay this fabrication or this configuration we are mainly using in the case of multi level uh, processes okay this is all about our uh, lambda element capacitor uh, i thought all you understand well uh, if you have any doubt you can comment at the comment box okay thank you